So we're talking this morning about deeper devotion to be reborn. You know the word reborn is obviously in the Bible. The, the scripture there for us, we're going to get to it just now, is in the book of John. But our main scripture for deeper devotion this month that we've been speaking about, and last month, actually this month, we're going still in deeper devotion. Now, some of you are saying, how deep can we go? How much more deeper can we go, Pastor? How much more can we talk about deeper devotion? Let me tell you, I don't think we can ever stop talking about intimacy with God. You see, we are not in a religion. We are in a relationship. Now, that sounds like a cliche, but it's not a cliche because when people choose to be part of a religion, they actually do not participate in the way that they should. You see, when you're in a relationship with Jesus, it's authentic. It's something that changes your life. It's something that you continue every day, just like you're in a relationship with your husband or wife. You need to talk to them. Otherwise, you're going to get the fist. Hey, you're going to look at your wife. You're going to talk to her. You're going to look in the eyes. Sometimes my wife's going to tell me, Julius, look at me. I'm talking to you now. Is anybody in there? You know when the husband's in the nothing box? Have, do you experience that? Am I the only one that experienced stuff like that? The nothing boxes? Yeah? Hello? McFly? Hey, how many of you watch Back to the Future? Amen. So th- these things happen where you, where you are in this place where, you, where your marriage needs to be worked on, where God wants to talk to you. And you know what? The Bible is so amazing that it, it even takes a marriage relationship and it, it equates it to the relationship that Jesus has with the church. I mean, isn't that beautiful that everything works together from Christ? Everything works together from that authority. Everything works in order. You know, the world speaks about balance, but God's kingdom is about order. Let me tell you that again. That's a, that's a key for you in certain areas because if you look at the world right now, it is very confused. It is very messed up, and it's going in all kinds of directions. They're trying to redefine definitions. Let's put it that way. The world is very clever at changing wording so that something can be passed by law. Amen. And when wording is changed, you must watch out. When something, a definition is changed, you must begin to watch out. You must begin to pray. You must begin to ask God that the Christian will not get sucked into all of this stuff and not get into the wrong debates because you must choose your battles well. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. So your battle is on your knees. That's why we're going deeper. Pastor Yuan, thank you for sharing Wednesday night with us. He shared with us Wednesday night midweek service. And we spoke about those prayer altars being rebuilt. We spoke about the fire coming down from heaven, building an altar for God's fire to fall. Amen. For God to answer that prayer. Are you building your altars at home? Are you building your devotional time with your family? Are you praying in the mornings? Are you praying in the evenings? Are you covering your life with prayer? Because the Lord wants you to pray. Amen. The Lord wants relationship. If it was a religion, we could say, thank you for coming to church. Thank you for attending. You're on the list. You're a member now. You can tick off the box. Your ticket is booked to heaven. You're sitting on the seat. You're warming it nicely every Sunday. No. There's Monday to Saturday that still needs to happen where you need to pray, spend time in the Word, declare the things that you need to declare, and build that relationship with Jesus. Amen. When you sit with a kneecap session with Jesus, that's where God begins to download and upload, and whatever God does, He gives you refreshing. He fills your life with peace, with joy, with strength. And you know what? When the boat is rocked, when the world is shaking, when your world begins to be shaken, because Listen, we can sometimes say it's not my problem. The people out there are dealing with the issues until it comes into your family. Amen? Until the thing comes to your doorstep, until that spirit comes against your family, until that worldly thing wants to creep into your life. That is the time where you cannot then be in crisis management. You have to be prepared. You have to be proactive. That's why I'm asking the church, we are not praying only for this season. We're praying for the season to come. How many of you know this? There's a preparation when God begins to speak to the vision of the church or to the visionaries of the church. God begins to prepare us for the season that's coming. That's why we're praying fervently now because there's more things coming against the church. There's more things coming in society that will squeeze the Christian, whether they like it or not, down on their knees. Some will run and some will pray. Some will run and some will stay. Come on. It is proven every time when, the, when it gets a little bit hot. Some will run. Amen. If it's that guys with you were at school, you know some guys you don't want to go to war with, David. You already know the guys that are going to run. When it gets hot, they're going to bail. They're going to keep quiet. They're going to hide away. They're going to say, Christian, not me. But you know this is the natural response. 
Even the disciples responded like this when they were asked, weren't you with Jesus? Remember Peter? What did Peter do? He denied that he was with Christ even. He said, I will die for you, Lord. I will go to prison. I'll... Wait, Peter, be careful, Peter. <laughs> Peter's sitting right in the front. Here. Be careful how fervently you declare that you will die for Jesus in church. When the test comes, are you going to pass it? Are you prepared spiritually? Have you built something of substance in your spirit? Because on the outside, you might look like the strongest man. You might look like Dwayne Johnson on the outside, the rock. You might look like him on the outside, but what does your spirit man look like on the inside? Because the spiritual realm does not recognize the flesh. Amen? It doesn't recognize how clever you are, how strong you are, how many degrees you have on the wall. It doesn't recognize all that. It doesn't even recognize your bank balance. But when in the spiritual realm you are recognized by who you are in Christ, you are recognized by whose you are, who you belong to, how strong you are in God, not how strong you are in the flesh and trying to figure out things in the flesh. And this is why we get into trouble all the time because we walk in the flesh. And the Lord spoke to me this morning before I prayed, when I prayed for the service, and the Lord said to me, one of the big obstacles of the church is that we walk after the flesh and not after the Spirit. One of the big obstacles in the church these days are that we have made it to become man's kingdom and not God's kingdom. We have what, uh, what our national leader, Byron Chicken, he calls it the spirit of empire. There's a big spirit of empire that's in the Christian uh, circles, in the kingdom of God, where people build the Tower of Babel. Amen. You remember those guys that all spoke the same language, they had unity, they had the same vision. They said, let us build a tower to heaven. Remember that in the Bible? And God says, no, you will not build a tower to heaven because I'm not in it. Because now you're taking glory for yourself. You said, we, look at us, we built this lovely church. Come on, it's the same principle, it's the same spirit, still operating today. What did God do? He gave them different languages and he confused them. How many of you know when man begins, listen, this is prophetic this morning. I don't know what's happening. I'm going totally off my notes, Pastor George. Forgive me. My wife knows me like this already. I don't even have to say it to her. Amen. But the thing is, as soon as we build in the church an empire that belongs to man, God will bring confusion in the church. Test it now. Ask me. Go check on social media right now, and you will see it's happening in the church right now. There's confusion. There are men and women of God that are falling left, right, and center in sin. The reason for that is, is because of the spirit of empire. It's because man has built a tower of Babel and said, look at our church. Look at our brand. Look at how many people we got saved. Look at how many people we got in this building. Look at all the stuff we've done for you, God. And God says, no, I'm not in it. The reason why God will not be in something is when man takes the glory for themselves. The reason that God will not touch something that man claims for himself is because God is a jealous God, the Bible says. He's an all-consuming fire. He does not share his glory. There isn't space on the throne for you and God. How many of you remember someone that got kicked out of heaven for that very same spirit? It is actual fact, if you cut right down to the bone, it's the spirit of the Antichrist that has crept into the church. Isn't that sad? The Antichrist spirit in the Christ church. Sounds like a book title. I think someone needs to coin that and write a book quickly. Amen. But it's so true, but it's sad. And that is why churches and people will fail is when they begin to become independent of the Holy Spirit, independent from the Word of God, independent... And if you have a spirit of independency in the church, we need to kill it. Now forgive me sometimes when I'm a little bit hard. Some of you find me a little bit hard, am I right? I've had conversations with some of you that you didn't like what I had to say. But sometimes I become a little bit hard when I see a spirit of independency, a spirit of rebellion coming up through something. And it doesn't mean that you yourself are sometimes even aware of it, but it's when you want to start something on the sideline and say, this is mine. Don't touch. Now, I believe in order. How many of you believe in order? We spoke about it at the, end of the, we spoke about it in the beginning of the service. If there's order, there's leadership. If there's leadership, there's covering. If there's covering, there's Christ. Come on. There's an order. Things happen sometimes. And I think what's happened in the church is even to the point where people these days 
do not like leadership even in the church. That's why people are rebelling in the world under the same spirit. And they bring it into the church and they say, the pastor, the leaders, the people around me, my connect group leader, do not have the right to correct me or rebuke me or train me in righteousness. It's not all about correcting and rebuking. I'm not just talking about whipping. I'm talking about helping you to grow. And I think spiritually that's what's happening in the church. People are looking for something. They're looking for something except the Word of God. And in this church, and I know many other churches, we believe that the Word must be preached, that the Word is important to us, that the Word is the guideline, the Word is, the word is Jesus, in actual fact. John says, well, John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's not just that we have this dead book in our hands, that we say, look at this lovely idea, this is the Word of God, it is God-breathed. And if we move away, there's even prophets that say, I am now prophesying extra biblical stuff be careful no no we in the spirit anything goes Woo! i will run as far as i can from you and shut the door in your face <laughs> amen come on there's some weird and wonderful things happening but we need to be born of the Spirit. And I want to talk to you about your prayer closet this morning. We start with John 3, verse 1 to 8. And if we can read there, if you can change the slide for me. It says, there was a man, and listen to this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these, things, these uh, signs that you do unless God is with him. So they saw Jesus doing the miracles. They saw Jesus doing all these great signs. And they said, unless the, you must be a teacher from God. You must be a rabbi. You must be someone from God. But listen to what Jesus says. Now, sometimes we can be swayed by the signs, the wonders, and the miracles to say someone is of God. But Jesus takes it deeper. He answers. He doesn't say, oh, you have discerned right. I am the son of God. He didn't answer like that. I am a prophet of God. I'm an apostle. You have discerned right. That's why the signs, wonders, and miracles are following. Because that's what the flesh would have answered. And why I'm talking about being reborn this morning and defining it for you is because unless, listen to this, Jesus says, verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again. Now what does this mean? Unless one is born of the Spirit. And we're going to clarify it in the next few verses. Let's go to the next slide. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? <laughs> Do you see what I'm talking about? That the church is walking too much in flesh and not discerning in the Spirit. We need to start understanding spiritual truth, spiritual principles, so that we can begin to grow in the Spirit. He says this, and Nicodemus is asking a fleshly question. Very silly question. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Like, wow. Okay. Let's into that. He says, verse 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is, and that which is born of the Spirit is, Spirit, do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again, reborn. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. I love what it says here. Jesus clarifies what it means to be born again. This is a, this is a very important scripture to the Christian church today because you cannot get saved by coming to church only. There's no church membership that can save you. You cannot even be saved even if, if a man of God just laid hands on you. You can go to 500 spirit-filled rock and roll meetings. Well, I should say goosebump and roll on the carpet meetings because we've had those meetings and they happen every now and then. It's great when it happens, but you've still got to make a decision. You've still got to, the word is bakir in Afrikaans. The word is repent in English. You've still got to turn away from sin, a sinful lifestyle, a one that loves sin, one that is indulging in the flesh, to turn... 180 degrees to that way, which is the way of the cross. Thank God for the cross. The cross is there, but the cross is a place of sacrifice. 
a place of death, a place of self-denial, a place where you say it's not about my life, it's about my life in Jesus now. I'm going to repent of the way I used to live. I'm going to turn away from this way, the worldly way, the fleshly way, and I'm going to say, Lord, I want what you've given me on the cross, life, and life more abundantly, life, and life eternal. I thank you, Jesus, that I go to the cross, because if I go to the cross, I die in the flesh.